Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. I think we're live. So. Hello, Dave. Welcome. Hello. Oh, hello, Dave. <laughs> so, welcome, everybody. Uh, you just seen uh, Steve there. If you were here a moment ago, you might have even spotted Dave hiding in the corner. Um, what was behind the glass by the looks of things there, Steve? <laughs> Excellent. Nice and safe, eh? Right. So, let's get cracking. Uh, so, uh, step one. What's new, uh, Steve? I believe we've uh, still shipping. How are yes. we doing? Yeah, we're, we're good. We're pretty up to date. Uh, as of, I think it was Tuesday, we can ship to New Zealand again, which was the only place that was there was a bit of a hold on. Uh, they'd stopped shipments for a while, for about a week to New Zealand when they were on lockdown. That's now opened up. There'll be a bit of a backlog, obviously, to clear, I think, at uh, this end going out. But, uh, Things are back to normal. Yeah, everywhere else is as normal. Maybe some local delays, depending on where you are. Yeah, I was going to ask how how are you doing with the the actual day to day <coughs> keeping up? That's all right. Yeah, yeah, we're up to speed. Uh, there's there's a couple of couple of orders outstanding over the last sort of this week and a couple from last week where there's bits and pieces we've got to cut. But on the whole, most stuff's going out within a day, two days. Oh, yeah. Excellent effort. Excellent. Yeah. Effort. So a round of applause, Steve. Thank you yeah. very much. <laughs> right. Uh, I, and how are we looking in general? Um, well, we're quite excited. Board? Sorry, we're quite excited. We've got the Paint All the Minis online convention this weekend, which we're going to talk about, Excellent. which is something a bit new and different. Oh, so. uh, yeah, I, if I pick that one up, thanks, Steve. Um, yeah. The uh, the convention itself, I think we've got uh, a few things planned. Uh, you wrote me into doing a bit of uh, building <laughs> and painting, um, but uh, likewise uh, for everybody uh, online now, uh, it's going to be myself and I've wrote to Gary in. Uh, Gary's been working on his book all year and uh, has finally managed to put that to bed, so to speak. Uh, I believe you've got them all starting to ship out as well steve uh, yeah we, we've shipped quite a few out so far of it in fact that everything that's got a book in it is gone um and they've, they've gone out the door fast so that's brilliant that's yeah, brilliant so uh, yeah gary and i uh, during the course of the weekend i think are doing some live broadcasts and yeah. we'll be on be live uh and we'll be trying to answer all your questions um burning questions i'm sure from the books uh details and we'll do some painting and projects throughout the uh weekend uh i'm currently playing with one of our little temples just getting some spray onto that one um and i'll show that video at the weekend uh gary's working on some new uh city block i believe uh some paper and uh, wallpapering and uh throwing paint on the mdf straight away uh so hopefully we'll be able to answer all your questions throughout that weekend um yeah, yeah and you've got a live show uh spots i believe one i do one. yes on saturday at one o'clock so, so i'll be speaking to dan dan's so. gonna grill you yes yeah, yes indeed but you're in the hot seat <laughs> instead of me that'd be great <laughs> yeah, yeah. so uh yeah i'm looking forward to doing that because uh it, it's new tech for us we're, we're still new at this malarkey uh, yeah. And we hope that everybody that's going to come down and join us, uh, get the tickets and join for the weekend, they can uh, um, get something out of it. Uh, an opportunity to ask us questions live uh, on the day, see what we do and how we paint all our lovely kits. Yeah. Bit of a range. And perhaps a few insights into how it all comes together. Are you going to yes. be able to take us around the factory, do you think? I think we could do something about that. Yeah, definitely. We can show stuff off. Brilliant. Right, yeah. so um, there'll be more uh, Paint All The Miniatures online convention details. If you haven't already found it on Facebook, we'll uh, provide some details later on uh, and in our Facebook posts and on our newsletter. Um, and make sure you get there if you can. Yeah, so we'll see yeah. you there. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'll switch over and bring a... Yeah. Dave. Dave. Right, so we're switching cameras because we want to introduce Dave, who was hiding behind that glass. Yeah, that was real. <laughs> it's okay, everybody. Dave uh, shares the house with Steve, and they're obviously in the factory working. This is the, our uh, elite team. 
yeah, 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 apparently elite. Yeah, yeah it's, Dave, uh, it's Dave on the lasers and making sure everything comes together. Um, so Steve, can you introduce Dave and tell us what he gets up to with Dark Ops? Well, a few people in the UK might might know Dave from the show scene because Dave, for the last couple of years, has been the sort of face of Sarissa at all the uh, gaming events, trade shows, and things we do. Um, but also, he's a big integral part of the team here, cutting stuff, uh, works in, with AJ and Gary on the design side, and he's sort of taken, when we bought Dark Ops last year, Dave's taken a hold of that, so he's been working through the kits, doing instructions and things for them, which was something that was that was missing, and also making some little changes, looking at where we can add to ranges, things like that. So yeah, he's got quite a, quite a big role. Ah, Dave, so te yeah. tell us more about what, what you've got in front of you there, Dave. Uh, so the stuff we've got in front of us is uh, Frost Lime stuff. So it's, it's Ice Heim is what the set's called on the Dark Ops website. And it's for Frostgrave bits and pieces like that. Obviously these ones are being painted up, covering Frost and stuff. You can use them for loads of different games, the Frost Skirmish games, anything like that. Uh, we're going through the ranges that we've picked up from Dark Ops, and some of them are like incredible ranges, like super fun. These kind of buildings are absolutely fantastic. We're doing bits of tweaks with some of them. Some of them we're, we're leaving the way they are. We're looking at uh, expanding some of the ranges, putting some new ranges out there, but uh, all that's like to come down the line. At the minute, we're just working through, like Steve was saying, putting instruction files in there, uh, getting them on par with what Sarissa's is. So basically, if you've had Sarissa kits before, you know they're going to come a certain way, they're going to come with certain instructions and bits and pieces. The Dark Ops has like a different feel to it, a different look to it, but uh, essentially it's the same same quality in what we're looking for, really. To No matter whether you're buying a Sarissa product or a Dark Ops product, you're going to be getting a quality product with instructions in, it's going to be easy to read, easy to put together, that kind of thing. So we've just been taking a little last while before obviously everything went a bit sideways uh, to start with the boats and stuff so we, we start with the dark seas range uh, and we've worked, reworked a few of them kits so they've got uh, spinning wheels in they're easy to put together they've got instruction that, files for them sorry that sea wolf uh, the sea wolf's ongoing uh, the sea wolf was almost finished but uh, i'm being diverted slightly on the air uh, well there's just been a small team now uh, as opposed to who's normally here it's quite a big team normally obviously it's just the, the whoever was left basically i think that's how, it's, how i've been rolled in <laughs> <laughs> so basically we're just obviously keeping everything running because the priority is getting your orders out there you're going to be stuck at home you want something to do we're still getting your stuff out there as long as the post keeps running unless we're told otherwise we'll still be running you know what i mean you're still going to get your yep. stuff uh, you can put it together so that's where the focus has been so the sea wolf is an ongoing project You've got uh, and yeah. i've got a bit of it uh, so if i bring this in slide this out so the original sea wolf that we've got uh, is this huge ship here, which is uh, this is only part of it that I've built up. And obviously the original one, uh, it's laid up in sections with three mil. Uh, and what we've started doing in the past couple of that ships is that... So uh, thickness MDF, is that the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's three mil thickness MDF. Uh, and then it's obviously each, each piece of this is a single piece that's put down and then layered and layered and layered until it reaches the right height for each of the decks. Because this one actually comes with three decks. Cause it's a, a pretty big wow. ship. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what we've been doing with the ships that we've been looking at, rather than going for this, because obviously it gives a curvature to the hull, we've started doing uh, something similar, but just with the normal two mil that we use. I don't know whether you can see this on camera, but it's actually an outer piece, then a dive divider, then an inner piece, and it's actually got curvature to the wood, which means you can actually bring curvature to the boats rather than a lot of individual pieces that you have to build up. It's then one piece that, that brings it round with the curvature still. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think I don't know if you can see that there. See the slight curvature. Yeah, just about. That. Yes, yeah, just yeah. about see that. Yeah. But, uh, and then you'll have yeah, there is that way. So yeah. you can see the curvature to it. And then obviously at the front of the boat that you've got here, where it's got these pieces, we'll have them again on this sort of slot in. So you we can still put these really nice graceful pieces at the front of the ship. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. So the really nice graceful pieces that are in and out in bits and pieces, obviously where the figurehead goes and all that kind of stuff. But we're basically just working through the Sea Wolf. We've already done um, the small galleon and the large galleon. So if you had that previously, the newer version, it'll be slightly different in the fact that it's got uh, it's going on there. Uh, a spinning ship's wheel. Uh, it's got like a little staircase. It's got like a few little bits and pieces that uh, makes it like a bit more like wargamery and stuff like that. So that's the, the larger galleon there. 
as you can see like it's got uh, a nice little spinning wheel it's got a little staircase and it's it's just a like an easy easy kit to put together really it's just that a tweaking that from role play as well as uh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. all butters and badgers all yeah. sorts of things a bit of fantasy yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, I, i'll share them on facebook later but someone's just got one of the ironclads and they've done it up as a, a dwarven nice sort of steamship nice really yeah. cool so they've added some bits to it and that looks really good yeah yeah that's the thing with these ranges even though obviously the, the initially designed or whatever you can use them for anything it's the same with the sarissa ranges and stuff even though they're designed like for a period it can still be you can take some of this some of that some of the other and put them together and it can look really cool for something that you wouldn't expect it to especially like uh, post-apocalyptic stuff and anything like that you can pull out like old west stuff bonds and bits and pieces but obviously with the dark ops we've got the ranges that we have at the minute that we're currently working through and taking it amending a few things like what steve was saying doing some instructions uh but then obviously later on down the line we're going to look at different ranges expanding the ones we've got going into new areas and bits and pieces like that intriguing, intriguing. Yeah, yeah. i'm sure there might be a few questions about that at another date but for now i say yeah, yeah. thank you very much dave no worries. um <clears throat> So uh, in terms of running through us, uh, past us rather quickly again uh, today, um, I think uh, it's probably time to round up with a few questions. Uh, and I'm sure, uh, is Trisha around today? Or Yeah, she's still she's, here, actually. She's, she's still, yeah. she's still, she's still yeah, working. still got her working, have you, downstairs? Yeah, yeah she's still working <laughs> while we're playing now. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think everybody needs to give us a uh, give the team particularly trisha <laughs> a round of applause for putting up with these two at work <laughs> for the yeah, last few agree that, yeah. on their own it's only She's probably going so crazy five times um, today. yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay how about i'm gonna have a quick look here and see if we've got any questions for you guys uh ooh, crikey i'm trying to keep up with it <laughs> <laughs> uh okay definitely play with some D, D on that ship yeah thank you very much uh, that was charlie uh right let's see what we got here okay uh so steve uh we said we got shipping out to uh, new zealand um is there any one place that we can't ship to bermuda yeah bermuda I don't, know, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> uh, randomly. Randomly, yeah. There's a few. Mostly, it's actually uh, some remote places rather than bigger places that have shut down. I think it's just uh, transport to them, obviously from somewhere else. Yeah. But now all the all the the main places, um, they're all business as usual. I think, as you say, it's just even speaking to the, the postal service locally to us uh i think everywhere's got some staffing issues you know people are off but the, yeah. the actual services are running as normal they're just taking a little bit longer to clear longer. clear so the just, stuff through yeah i guess that uh, just uh uh forbearance and uh waiting uh once uh an order's out the door that's great. Yeah, I, I don't think. I mean, we've we've sent stuff out on a sort of non-priority, and we've we've had some people in the states getting their orders within two or three days in the yeah. last week or so, uh, quicker than someone in the UK. So I think it just really depends where you are. I think on the whole, it's a it's probably about the same as it normally is. Maybe a day or two longer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dave. Uh, we asked we got asked this question uh last time but uh what would be your favorite kit out of all the ranges there's a lot of kits in the ranges like i think there's over a thousand products in total um i'm not even that sure some of the kits that i have built uh is like the mason fort the you know the stuff like that because it, because the encasement in the small even the small pillboxes because it's multi-stage uh, encasement which means like the the window like looks like it's going in so it actually gets smaller and smaller like a, a machine gun position and stuff i've yeah. put a few of them together and that just to figure like that, what that was and see how it looked and it actually looks really cool so the mason yeah. fort's actually pretty cool but it's a similar thing with like the small pillboxes and stuff so you could really set up like a small town a couple of pillboxes and that kind of thing because it always reminds us of um you know like monte casino where it's in the longest day and they've got like a pack 40 underneath uh, the yes yeah, yeah. So I want to yeah. have a look at the emplacement and stuff on like that. The encasement, see. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. see, we're doing that. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, 
we've got a variety of games coming up this year. Uh, I think Oathmark's one of them. What would you say would be the best piece of terrain for Oathmark? I, I think it's it's a fantasy setting, isn't it? So it really, you, you could pull a lot of things into it. We've obviously got the ice time stuff we've just shown off. Yeah. We've got a lot of the, you know, the classical timber framed buildings which are in the Sarissa range where we've got some European style ones, some English style ones. Uh, you've got all those, but there's nothing to stop you pulling burrows and badgers, for instance. You know, yeah. that's got a real tavern. fantasy yeah. building that's with and things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they would be great. Um but but you you could use so much anything that's sort of stone brick looking some of the little yeah, some Scottish of the, uh, American crops. stuff and yeah. yeah. American Civil War or War of Independence, like uh, yeah. small stone cottages and bits and pieces like that. That's what I'm saying. If you look at the through the ranges, rather than for a specific range, you could pull things out of like five or six different ranges that would fit a fantasy yeah. setting easy. You know what I mean? Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, Steve, we've got one from Charlie saying, can you give us a juicy secret? Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> juicy secret. It's um, to be juicy, though. I know. It's like on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At the weekend at Patmacon. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give him what I tell him. If he comes back next week, he'll tell him a secret next week. He'll think of something. <laughs> All right. There yeah. you go, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and out of uh, the new games coming up, uh, what sort of games are, are we looking at planning in for ourselves for our Monday Gamers Night once we get back? <laughs> new things uh, yeah what do you fancy playing <laughs> yeah we were uh quite fancy digging out some of the old fantasy stuff and playing some oath mark that looks quite good um we've got we were going to start a dnd campaign oh we yeah what, we're two, still gonna pick two up weeks D &D. ago yeah uh, ship. yeah <laughs> so we had that and we've decided to put that on hold till we can all actually sit around the same table yeah B1 um, pretzels so, makes it yeah. much more fun. Yeah, for yeah. Monday night games night. But uh, no, there's that. But uh, I, there's so much. Keep looking on Kickstarter. And no, don't do that. Just don't do that. Things on there. Yeah, so. yeah. No, that's for next year, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's plumbing. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm gonna, I've got some uh, tanks here that I've got to build. So uh, that might be for uh, something like Water Tanker. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Get a few games of that in. Um, yeah, got a few uh, games of Legion because I know we've got our Star Wars stuff behind you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All one. right, so I think, I think uh, run away from Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to ban him for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some sand troopers to use. Right, guys, um, I think we'll call it a night for now. Um, yeah. We'll gather up some more questions. Um, we're going to be busy this weekend, obviously at Pat McCon. Um, we'll see any of you uh, that are coming. Uh, 11 o'clock in the morning uh, here. And yeah. uh, otherwise, we'll see everybody same time next Thursday. Yeah, uh, so guys. Yeah, yeah. Take care. Yeah. yeah. Thank Bye. you very much, Dave. Thank you, no Steve. Worries. Thank you, Tricia. <laughs> <laughs> and goodbye for <from> me. <laughs> we'll see you soon, guys. See you guys. Soon.